Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's great to be back here in Central Florida. I want to thank the State Attorney Andrew Bain for hosting us today. I also want to welcome Sheriff uh, Dennis Lima from nearby Seminole County. Uh, we also have Representative Steele, Placencia, Amnesty. Um, I saw True Now. I saw David Smith. So I've seen other folks too. Uh, and then we're going to hear from some other folks. Uh, Justin uh, Milkerick, Winter Park resident, and Flash Shelton from California is going to talk a little bit about why we're here. So we're, we're here today because you, know, you assume in America uh, if you uh, purchase a home and own a residence that that's your residence. That if you happen to maybe split time in Orlando and Michigan, that if you go to Michigan over the summer, people aren't going to be able to just move into your house and then claim squatters rights on your private residence. And yet, in places like New York and California, that's exactly what's happening in this country. Homes are being invaded, uh, and those states and their laws are not siding with the homeowners, they're siding with the squatters. Uh, in fact, we uh, have seen squatters move in and claim residence. Uh, this forces a massive, long, drawn-out judicial review before they can even be removed from the property. These are people that never had a right to be in the property to begin with. Uh, earlier this month in New York, a woman returned to a property she inherited to find squatters living there. She changed the locks to get them out, and the state of New York arrested her instead of the squatters. Uh, just a few days ago, two squatters in New York City allegedly murdered the property owner when she confronted them for being in her apartment illegally. In fact, we even have illegal aliens taking to social media, instructing other foreigners how to come into this country and commandeer property. They have gotten involved in this. Well, today in the state of Florida, uh, we say very simply, uh, what, what passes muster in New York and California is not passing muster here. Uh, you are not going to be able to commandeer somebody's private property uh, and expect to get away with it. We are in the state of Florida ending the squatter scam once and for all. And <laughs> momentarily, I'll be signing HB 6, uh, 621, which will give the homeowner the ability to quickly and legally remove a squatter from a property and which will increase criminal penalties for squatting. Now, we have not had uh, the same type of issues here as you've seen in California or New York. Nevertheless, uh, our laws were really geared towards this not necessarily being a fad. You know, this idea of squatting, you know, when you had the old West and people would settle the West You'd show up, there'd be a place, so people would settle. They'd create a community. Well, to have someone come seven, eight years later and say they own the property after all this, you understood why you know, that was done in that way. Uh, that was never intended to empower somebody to just invade some residential subdivision and occupy, illegally occupy somebody's private residence. So what we're doing today is, is recognizing that but I think more importantly, providing very swift remedies because what the squatters know is even when they're in the wrong, it's a massive process many times before they can be evicted. Uh, and a lot of times the process is very expensive. And so we don't want the law to have the thumb on the scale in favor of people that are violating the law. We want the law to have the thumb on the scale in, for, in favor of law abiding property owners, and that's what you're going to see here with this piece of legislation. What you can do now, if you're the victim of squatting, uh, you can simply fill out a form, give it to your local sheriff, and the sheriff is instructed to go and remove the people who are inhabiting your dwelling illegally. And that will happen very quickly. And I can guarantee you, it's just like you saw, uh, I think it was a couple months ago, there was a discussion about some of these theft rings that happen, a lot of them with illegal aliens, and how people will steal in New York. Sometimes they'll try to come to Florida to spend the money, but they don't steal in Florida. And the question was, well, why don't you steal in Florida? And they said, because you go to jail in Florida when you do that. <laughs> 
So I think it's going to be similar here. Yes, you're going to have really strong remedies so that it does happen to you, they're going to be ejected. But the fact that you have those remedies, the fact that a sheriff Lima can go in, send deputies, and liberate your residents for you very quickly, people are not going to want to even try this in the state of Florida. So I commend the legislature for this action. I think it's going to be something that is going to be very, very meaningful uh, for this state. And look, uh, you see these trends that happen in these other parts of the country. Uh, I think good leadership is looking and saying, okay, uh, we're not going to repeat what is going on in these failed jurisdictions. And so the legislature was up to the task, and then here today we're signing this into law is going to show that the state of Florida is up to the task. So I thank the legislature for what they've done. Uh, we believe in the rule of law. We believe in private property rights. We think it's good that people can aspire to own a home. You know, we even are proud that we've got a lot of seasonal residents here. You know, it's great that people will uh, maybe decide to come to Florida for, for half the year. Uh, and if they do do that and they go to uh, the Northeast or the Midwest or even Canada, many people do, that uh, they can, their house will be uh, left unattended. Uh, they're not going to have some rogue person move in and then try to assert rights against the lawful property owner. So uh, the squatter scam ends today uh, with my signature on this piece of legislation, and the state of Florida will be better for it. Now, we are going to hear from some folks here today. Uh, so first, we're going to hear from our uh, great state attorney uh, for the Ninth Judicial Circuit, Andrew Bain. Good afternoon. I'd like to thank you all for coming for this very important bipartisan bill signing. I'd like to thank the governor for taking the trip to Orlando, and I'd like to welcome him here, here to our office. While I was an Orange County judge, I presided over the civil division for almost a year and a half. And almost every day, I presided over cases where property owners were trying to remove squatters from their homes. Imagine that you leave for vacation or take leave to take care of a sick family member, only to return home and find someone that has taken up residence in your home. Didn't go through a month long or more court proceeding to remove that squatter and then be left with the bill to get your home back, that home that you worked so hard to purchase. Or you might live next door to a vacant home. And someone moves into it and turns it into a drug den, trap house, or brothel. Then starts the lengthy process of contacting the homeowner and that court proceeding that you just heard me talk about. I long hoped that the legislature would do something to speed up this process, because this process was so outdated and draconian. This is why I'm excited that about this bipartisan bill that would give so much needed relief to the citizens of my circuit and to the state of Florida. Property ownership rights are one of the most important rights that we have in this country. Today is a big step forward in making sure that this injustice no longer continues. So I would love, I love th this bipartisan legislation and the bill signing that we're having today to end this <clears throat> problem and scourge that we have in our community. Well, uh, thank you so much, Governor. Another reason why people are leaving their states and moving to the great state of Florida. Um, I, I, I tell you, it's, uh, you have always uh, stood as an ambassador of public safety, law and justice, and protecting the most vulnerable of this state, and this is another example of that. I want to thank our legislative uh, body, uh, both our delegates here in Central Florida and abroad, because this received unanimous support. And it's been uh, long too often where we've seen homeowners that have spent their entire life working and earning. Uh, some have inherited homes of parents, and to knock on the door and be met with squatters. You know, squatters actually is a very, very kind term. These are criminals and con artists that need to be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. 
This is why the Florida Sheriff's Association, Police Chiefs Associations have gotten behind this bill from the beginning. You know, we've walked away from scenarios where legitimate homeowners have argued with people who are inside their home using the most vulnerable of areas inside the house. Can you imagine having people squatting in a home that you own, taking showers and using the restroom in your own house? And then a process that gets tied up in the civil process that sometimes can take six or seven weeks to get these criminals out. That is no more with the governor's signature on this document. Sheriffs from across the state will be able to provide the adequate resources and support for victims of, of, of these crimes and homeowners to preserve their property. And I'm incredibly grateful on behalf of all of our legislators and the governor to make this a possibility and give us, public safety professionals, another tool to use to protect our citizens of the great state of Florida. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for coming out <clears throat> to hear the bill and, and to uh, have the governor uh, sign, sign this amazing uh, piece of legislation that we put forward. Uh, I, work, I started working on this uh, bill about a year and a half ago. Um, I, I heard the first case of squatting on Fox News, and I thought to myself, I didn't realize this was such a big problem. Uh, Patty Peoples was actually on, on TV talking about it. It happened to her in, in Jacksonville, and it was too late for me to actually file a bill that session. So I decided, you know what I'm going to do? That's going to be the first bill I file next session. And so I worked all summer long with different individuals across the state that had issues like Patty Peoples had in, in our great state. And so I went ahead and, and drafted something, a piece of legislation that I thought would work, and it didn't initially, we got it passed, uh, but we had to make major changes to make sure it was gonna be effectively accepted across the board. So I wanna thank the governor for actually having common sense approach, because he is one of the only leaders in this, in this country that actually has a common sense approach on things. And I think that we need more people elected into office that have a common sense approach. And so I want to thank him personally for, for uh, taking this bill up. It's not, it's not always that you get a bill across the uh, floor, but it's, it was across the floor unanimously in the Senate and in the House. So I want to thank everybody for doing it. Patty, uh, you know, thank you for taking the time to spend with me and talking about this. And I want to thank God for, for putting me in the position to actually make this change. So thank you very much. Governor DeSantis, thank you so much for having me here today for the House sign for the signing of Bill 621. So I'm going to apologize in advance to everybody for reading, but I want to make sure everybody hears me. My name is Justin Mel Carrick, and I'm just one of the neighbors that had to deal with squatters invading our street. Squatters turned the house across the street from us into a drug and prostitution house. We live in a good and decent neighborhood flanked by an elementary and high school. We have at least a dozen kids on our street who play outside every day, in addition to all the kids walking to and from school. The squatters brought reckless driving, drugs, weapons, and verbal threats to the lives of my neighbors. We came together to work with police. We put up floodlights, cameras, called the police whenever there was suspicious activity. The police would arrest the drug buyers, but never the squatters. The police hands were tied. This was a civil matter that had to go through the courts. We were told to leave the squatters alone, ignore them, don't engage. As a law-abiding and tax-paying citizen, we were told to stay in our homes while these criminals carried on. We were prisoners in our own homes because of these squatters. This insanity lasted for five months. So five months might not seem like a long time for everyone, but when, sa when the safety of your family's lives are threatened, you don't sleep very much. We went door to door with flyers letting neighbors know about the situation. Thankfully, a neighbor knew someone in the court's office to expedite the eviction process. I truly believe that this is the only reason we were able to get the squatters out. Our community has been shaken by this experience. We never thought something like this would happen, and I would not wish this on anyone. House Bill 621 is definitely a step in the right direction to help law enforcement and neighborhoods, and I'm so thankful for that. But I take my responsibility as a parent seriously, and we have to teach our kids right from wrong, legal from illegal, and how to stand in truth. I pray the nation takes note of House Bill 621 and moves into truth with it. Thank you, Governor DeSantis, for letting me speak my truth today. It has truly been an honor. Thank you.
Hi, my name is uh, Flash Shelton, and I am the squatter hunter. <laughs> First, I'd like to thank Governor DeSantis for making it possible for me to be here and be a part of this historic event. Today is a good day for Florida homeowners. This law bill is a promising start to giving hardworking homeowners the support they need and deserve. There are a lot of people saying that homeowners shouldn't be able to own additional properties to make an income as a landlord, that they are greedy. One woman even posts on social media with a million followers that no one should make money without physical labor. But the truth is, landlords are needed greatly to provide housing for the majority that aren't in a position to purchase a home, including the many that are saying this, blaming landlords for squatting. Homeowners and landlords are a crucial part of our economy, and I'm proud to stand up and fight for them. My journey here today started with me just being a good son, protecting my mom, what every good son should do when squatters take over their mom's home. In 2019, after my father passed away, and while we were attempting to sell the home, I was notified that there was a break-in. I did what everyone would do. I called the sheriff. I told them that someone had broken into my parents' vacant home. The responding deputy called me and verified a broken back door. Then he said the words that every homeowner fears to hear. You have, you said it was a vacant home. It appears you have squatters and there's nothing we can do. I know what it feels like to feel the helpless, hopeless feeling when dealing with squatters and the law saying it's a civil matter, fearing that long drawn out and costly process. I decided to lift my head up stand up and fight. I broke the law down to its knees and figured out that if they could take a house, I could take a house. I got my squatters out in less than a day using the same system and their rights against them. I started squatter hunters to start helping others to shift the balance. We are making an impact nationwide and I'm, and I'm consulting in a few other countries. This is a worldwide problem. My fight to change squatter laws started one year ago, and I will not stop fighting until, squatters laws, until squatter laws are changed from coast to coast and homeowners are free from their squatters. Thank you. Okay, so we're, uh, we're excited about being able to, to make this official. Uh, I think we'll be the first state in the country to be, uh, to be leaning in on this issue, and uh, that's typically the way it works on a lot of issues. Uh, but that's good. That's good. So, all right, if it, whoever wants to come up, you can crowd around here, and we'll do it. These are permanent, so who wants one of these? I'll take this one. Okay. All right. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Is that water hunter? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. okay. All right. So here we go. <laughs> Yeah. 
So we're excited to get that in the books. I think it's going to be uh, meaningful for this state, not only in terms of the rights, but as I said, the deterrence of people from trying to squat and, and perpetuate this scam here in the state of Florida. Also, i uh, like to uh, point out that we have rescued even more uh, Floridians from Haiti, which is obviously going through a lot of difficulty. Uh, so not another flight has come in. Uh, we expect more to be happening. Yeah, there were def there were hundreds of people. Uh, we've gotten 90 back so far. And I think some of the other people, you know, they, they, they sign up with us, but if they can get a, a ride, I think other people have gotten out as well. So we're going to continue to do that. We think it's important. We did it when Israel, post-October 7th, we rescued a lot of Americans, particularly Floridians from there. And we're going to do the same with our emergency management resources in Haiti. Uh, and then also, you know, you, you look now, uh, remember there was um, a, a school in South Florida like two months ago that had... 10 cases of measles, and the whole corporate media was acting like this is like this thing that was unique to Florida. They, they smeared our Surgeon General for putting out very well thought out balanced guidance. Fast forward, there was no outbreak, additional outbreak. So his, his response was correct. Now you see 30 cases in Chicago with illegal aliens. I don't hear the same carping. Uh, from the media. In fact, they're not talking about it really very much at all. So it just goes to show you, you know, the, the phony narratives that get put out uh, all to drive an agenda. Uh, the fact of the matter is they kind of whip it up, and then when things, things go the different direction than what they were predicting, they just forget that it ever happened, and then they just move on. Uh, well, I think it's important to point out, you know, our Department of Health, our Surgeon General were on this. Uh, you know, they handled it appropriately. Uh, you see even more cases in these other areas, and you don't hear the same uh, type of carping, uh, and I wonder why that is. Okay, with that, I'm happy to take some questions. Sure. It only comes under my purview if there, if a municipal official, elected official, is indicted by a grand jury, then I would suspend. That's typical. If there's not an indictment, then I, my power of suspension doesn't reach. It reaches county officials, countywide officials, short, I, even ne neglect of duty you can do for that. But for the municipal, if there's a grand jury, true bill return. Now, I don't know. I just know what I read. If that does happen, then that would be the trigger for us to act, but we would not do anything prior to that. Well, obviously, we're, I mean, look, just look around our demographics. It's very, very important for us. Um, we have so many seniors, uh, you know, four or five million seniors in this state. Um, it, demographically, it's really important. And we've done a lot, our Department of Elder Affairs, the Florida legislature, there's been a lot. But uh, this is a target-rich environment, this state, uh, for exploitation because you have a lot of seniors and you also have a lot of seniors that are retired and they have some income. So, so people that, that, that want to do harm uh, to do gravitate. Now, we have good penalties and we've, we've done a lot, uh, but that's just the reality uh, that we find ourselves in. So we've always acted with all the Disney issues, parents' uh, rights and education, uh, replacing uh, Reedy Creek and making sure that was a state control board, uh, doing the, you know, nullifying these covenants at the 11th hour. Everything we've done has been in the best interest of the state of Florida. And, and we have been vindicated on all those actions. Uh, going forward, we're going to continue to govern with the best interests of the state of Florida. So, so I'm glad that they were able to do that, that settlement. Um, th those 11th hour covenants and restrictions were, were never going to be valid. We knew that. Uh, the, 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 the challenge to the state oversight board to replace Reedy Creek, that's not going anywhere. Obviously, that was dismissed in district court. So we have uh, an interest as a state um, in moving forward to make this region very strong. This oversight, tourism oversight board in that district is a big part of that. And, uh, and I think that there's going to be ways where, uh, you know, we can do things that are in the best interest of the state of Florida. Um, and I think Disney can be a part of that. I mean, certainly you look at Universal, 
they're doing the epic universe. That's going to be a huge, huge game changer for this region. I got to think Disney would have an interest in maybe, maybe offering uh, another one. The district will be ready to, to negotiate uh, something to be able to be good for the state of Florida, be good for jobs, and be good for all those things. But you know, I would just point out, a year ago, people were trying to act like that all these legal maneuverings were all going, going to succeed against the state of Florida. And the reality is here we are a year later and not one of them has succeeded. Every action that we've taken uh, has been upheld in full and the state's better off for that. Excuse me? I think good. I think, look, I think the fact that this, that, that this, this is moving, beyond, moving forward, I think. I think that's what the company wants to do. And, um, you know, a lot of what happened with parents' rights in education, some of that stuff, was really driven by Burbank. It was not driven by Orlando, and I think we've always understood that. Um, and so I, I think that there's a desire uh, to move forward. Uh, I think that they have uh, things that they probably have opportunities to do, to, to expand their footprint, to continue to attract visitors. And, and, and those things, when they can coincide with the state's interest, you know, we, we think that that would be good. So I think the board will work with them. They are going to do a development agreement of some sort to kind of provide some contours for, for the district's land and how that's going to be processed uh, if it is processed over the ensuing um, months and years. And I think that there's a lot of opportunities for, for, for big wins for the state of Florida. And But the good news is you as a citizen, you now have – uh, a, a control board overseeing this uh, that is accountable, that, that, has been, that has been appointed by people that you've elected uh, and that are not there to just represent one company's interest, but to represent the entire state of Florida's interest, particularly this region of Florida. And while there may be things that one company does that is in the state's interest, that's not always 100% in alignment. And so this is, um, this is a good situation. We came back here a month ago, I think, we did a press, press event down the road highlighting some of the things that this board has done. And, and this has been an example of good government. They've been able to clean up a lot of stuff. There's more transparency. The taxpayer is being treated better. Those tenant businesses are being treated better. Uh, and so there have been a lot of big wins as a result of this already. And I think going forward, you've got a lot of possibilities. I mean, we have been kind of the place that people have, have wanted to come for many years, but particularly in the last three or four years. Uh, this area, of course, has always attracted a lot. I, I just think with the, the new Universal Park, I mean, I think it's just going to be a huge game changer. Uh, it's bigger than their other two parks combined. I mean, like, imagine that footprint. That's pretty huge. And so, you know, I got to think that, that Disney would want to answer that to be able uh, to, to kind of keep up with the competition. And I think that's a good thing for Florida to have businesses competing against each other to offer more and more attractions uh, for the tourists. I don't get involved in that, so I'll just refer you for you to them. Uh, as you know, this is all legal. There's different uh, general counsels in each agency, usually interact with the chief of staff and the general counsel, uh, the head of the executive branch. So I don't know. Uh, I can tell you since I've been governor, that's just not something that, that, I've, that I've gotten involved in. I got to focus on the task at hand, and you got good people working for you that can kind of sort out uh, all, that, all that other stuff. That's the normal course of things. When there's, a, when there's a, a felony indictment returned against a municipal elected official, the, the appropriate action has traditionally been to suspend that official at that point. So I, I, would, I would assume that's what's going to happen. We'll have to see if this happens, what the indictment looks like. But that's typically what we've done in these cases, I, not only since I've been governor. I think that's what governors have done for quite some time. All right. Thanks, everybody. God bless. We'll see you soon. Thanks.